those as well. Because as I said, you know, this is Rajab. Uh, and I said last week, you know, on the 13th, which was yesterday, today is the 14th. So the 13th was the birth of Sayyidina Ali. The 27th night will be the night of Miraj. And so for a few minutes today and then next week and probably the following week we'll talk about that. Um, when we look at the Miraj, this journey, you know, it's explicitly mentioned one place in the Quran, which is the first verse of Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17. And implicitly mentioned in the first few verses of Surah Najm, Surah number 53. The whole purpose of us knowing about this journey is for us to get a better understanding of the status of Rasulullah and to become closer to him. You know, and, and as you know, some of us know, you know, this this journey occurred late, you know, during the time in Mecca. So after the tenth year in Mecca of, of the mission, you know, because in the tenth year of, of that mission, you had two people who passed away, which was a significant blow to Islam. And they both passed away within days of each other. And they both passed away because of starvation, the effects of starvation. You know, because in the seventh year of the mission is when Quraysh boycotted Banu Hashim and Banu Muttalib. You know, because of their support for Rasulullah and Quraysh said, either hand him over to us, or we will boycott you and you will starve to death. So they were isolated in this small valley. And for those three years, there was no trading with anyone outside. No one was able to go, go in. People would sneak stuff in. They lived off of leaves and chewing on leather. And this went on for three years. You know, again, this is the beloved of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he does not need to go through any of this. But this is his love for us. Both of these two who are closely connected to Rasulullah are also mentioned in Surah wad -Duha, where Allah SWT refers to their action as His own action. One of them is the uncle of Rasulullah SAW, Hazrat Abu Talib radiallahu anhu. In Surah wad -Duha, Allah SWT says, وَالدُّحَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَلَّهَ مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَهَ وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ دُولَهَ وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَارُدَهَ أَلَمْ يَجِدْ كَيَتِيمًا فَعَوَهَ أَلَمْ يَجِدْ كَيَتِيمًا فَعَوَهَ That were you not orphaned and we gave you shelter. Where did Allah SWT give him shelter? The house of Hazrat Abu Talib. Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa that were you not shel uh, orphaned and Allah SWT says and we gave you shelter. So he's referring to the action of Hazrat Abu Talib as his own action. And then two verses after that, wa wajadaka ailan fa'agna. You know, and were you not 
restricted in means and we made you wealthy. Through whose wealth did he become wealthy? The wealth of Bibi Khadija Kubra, radiallahu anha. So Allah says, and we made you wealthy. So these two are actually in, in reality mentioned in Surah wa duha So that year when these two passed, Rasulullah Sallallahu referred to that year as Amul Huzn, the year of sorrow. You know, normally, you know, if somebody passes away, we order to what? You mourn for three days. The mourning period is three days. You know, except for the wife when she mourns for her husband when he passes. Yet for these two, his uncle Hazrat Abu Talib and his wife Bibi Khadija Zul Qubra, Rasulullah refers to the whole year as Amul Huzn, the year of sorrow. We'll continue from here next week. Uh, unfortunately, I get diverted sometimes, and uh, but uh, you know we'll get to the point soon, inshallah. Uh, but uh, you know the background to things is important to understand. Uh, you know, if you don't know the background, then you can't understand. You know the uh, uh, the uh, importance or the uh, uh, finer points of things. Uh, and, uh, you know, and unfortunately, you know, with most of us, we don't know the backgrounds to many things, so we have to, you know, you know, kind of work on things. In the Quran, why the Quran? In the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa has given all the knowledge. Everything is contained in the Quran. Yet the Quran is so short. Because he doesn't go into the details, he didn't need to go into the details, because he's talking, the, the Quran is a conversation between him and his beloved. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the one to whom he's already given the knowledge. So he doesn't need to give the background. And not only he's given the knowledge, but Rasulullah himself is the explanation to the Quran. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand, uh, fill our hearts with his true love and the true love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all of those who they love, inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah go and make sunnah, inshallah.